Hello and good morning. So for today's lab activity, we will look into reading simple JSON data from the internet. So uh, what is actually JSON data? So JSON is JavaScript object notation. So it is a platform neutral language independent data interchange format that is written in text. So it is also human readable and is commonly used for exchanging data from one application to another application, typically uh, from machine to machine communication or machine to machine data exchanging format. So why we use JSON? So we use JSON because it is platform independent. And then it is also programming language neutral, meaning that any programming language can use can be used to read JSON. It doesn't matter if you use Python, Java, PHP, Haskell, Ruby, and so on. So JSON can be read with any programming language. And then it is also easily readable by human. It is easily possible and readable by human. This is also an advantage because by uh, being easily readable by human, the normal human being can read the raw JSON file. And then it is also structured. So meaning that it is easier for the machine to read and to pass. And it is much more compact when compared to XML. It is also widely supported by various platforms, API and SDK. And almost all programming languages would have support for reading JSON. You can name any programming languages and you will find that each of these programming languages have library dedicated for reading JSON like uh, Java, C, C++, Python, Ruby, and even ESP8266 and Arduino also have library for reading JSON file. So uh, what do you usually use JSON for? So let's look into JSON use cases. So for mobile programming languages yeah, or when developing a mobile application, you have to look into use cases of JSON. So first and foremost, you can use JSON for importing data from foreign database or from third party information system or application. Because JSON is platform independent, it is widely used as export uh, format. And then you can use this export format to import the data that has been exported by foreign database or from a third-party application. And then your mobile application also can use JSON as an safe format or ex for exporting the data that has been recorded inside your mobile application. Because if you export your data in JSON format, it can be almost guaranteed that other application or other programmers can read your export format data. Next, JSON can also be used as a client-server communication format. So when a client wants to communicate with a server, it can request the resources in JSON. And then uh, the server can also respond in JSON format. And then uh, as part of number three, JSON can also be used as part of the web API and RESTful web services response. So when you send a request to the server, and then the server can respond back uh, with an answer that is encoded in JSON. So you can request the date okay, from the remote server, and then the remote server will respond with the current date or you can request the latest currency exchange and then the server will respond with the value that represents the latest currency exchange. Okay, these are the sample of our JSON file for the JSON notation. Okay, you can see that uh, it is a structured uh, format. It is within a structured format. 
They can have a first name, okay, and last name. You arrange in the key value system. So when you read the first name, you can get John, and then if you read last name, you can get Smith. Then it also have bo boolean, a string, integer, and then floating number. And then it can also support arrays and sub uh, structure. Okay, this is an array, and then this is also a null data. Okay, this is a simple uh, JSON format. Okay, this is also another simple JSON format. We have pair okay, as a key, and then this is a value. Key and then value. Okay, if you look here, it also support a uh, long integer and also string. Okay, the rest is string. The string will be encoded or enclosed in quotes. Okay, what are the requirements for reading JSON from remote server in Android application? Okay, let's say if you want to develop an Android application that can read JSON from a remote server, you may need several support library. One of it is JSON library. And then you need a communication library or HTTP library to initiate a HTTP call to retrieve the JSON file. So we use Volley library as it is recommended by Google. And then optionally, you may also need to use JSON to Pojo translator. So what is Pojo? Pojo is, means plain old Java object. This is optional, but if you use this tool, it would make your life easier when trying to pass the JSON into Java class or Java object. And then in Android application, you need to request internet permission, which is often included in Android manifest file. Right, then you may need a good understanding of Java and Array. So uh, in our lab activity, we will try to create an application that can display current Bitcoin prices. So by the end of the next lab activity, you should be able to read and pass simple JSON file from a remote server, which I will provide. And then use a Postman and JSON schema tool to build a Pojo class for passing JSON. So once again, Pojo means plain old Java object or a plain the data that has been passed from JSON file. And then you can make an API call to a remote server and read its JSON response. And finally, you should be able to display Bitcoin prices based on the JSON response. Okay, these are the sample application that you will be able to develop in the next lab session. So, Please uh, proceed by clicking the video. We seeing you on the next lab segment.